hello everyone i hope you guys are doing well and in this video i will be showing you how to install and use the imesh add-on so let's get started uh, once you're in blender and you've gotten your copy of the imesh add-on by the way it will be available on the blender market um, or the link below the video so you just go to file, um, edit and we go to user preference install add-on and where you have that set saved uh, it's just a zip file you, uh, you just click on it and it goes ahead and install it and then you click on enable and if you want to kind of use it forever <laughs> or have it always enabled you click on save preference so this is what you get a very simple UI uh, the way I approach most tools which I create is to make it as easy as possible because that's the way I kind of see the world make things easy and use very user friendly and not very intimidating which is the same um, mindset for this so we have the select image and generate so you just click on select image uh, it's going to open a window browser uh, because of how we are approaching it if you double click it then you can get this pop up but sometimes when you click on it and don't see any image browser it's at the back of blender uh, but from some instances shows so you can just double click this and it shows uh, let's just start with one simple one so you click on that and it loads up the image and you just click generate um, as easy as that and you can see um, the duration of how long it's going to take so this is depending on the size and quality of your image if if you're using like a 4k image it's definitely going to take longer and if you're using a 1080p image is going to take short, uh, shorter time and all the processing power all the processing is not done within your computer so you don't have to have like a beefy computer to run this everything is done online so this is real time it took 20, uh, 29 seconds and yeah this is the result you get uh, right off the back uh, you can start seeing outline of the textures so you can preview this quickly by just clicking on textures and you have it working uh, what can you use this for? Um, you could use this as a background filler set or you could use this as a nice way to have a very immersive background for rendering or just even for hero assets and if you manage it well to hide some of the floors um, you can get away with it. Uh, yeah so this is what you have you can start putting 3D objects uh, but also we give you lots of parameters um, like I mentioned I didn't want to make it very intimidating so some of the more complex parameters are hidden in the modifier stack where you can really um, adjust things so you can adjust the detail level with a su uh, subdivision level um, though as you increase it you, you will notice some artifacts um, some banding effect uh, we have lot of um, some techniques and s settings for you to kind of play with this but as you increase the detail the kind of details also transfers to the geometry and the final resort um, so I'll just set this back to 8 you also have the ability to adjust like how much um, kind of extrusion you want and you can extrude it as much as you want but no you're going to be stretching the texture um, that's to say the quality of your texture is also a big factor um, if you have a very high quality detailed texture the end result is going to be uh, quite crisp, crisp and very um, like high quality um, so you can use the transform to kind of adjust the extrusion. You can use this to also kind of play with the distortion based on your camera view. Uh, maybe if you want it to look a certain way, um, these parameters can um, really assist you. And this is geometry node. So if you are quite conversant with geometry node, you already have the main data of the depth map, which is always available to you if you go to your image editor. Uh, that's the wrong one. So you have the depth map information that you can save out and use it for anything you want. So it's a free generation um, generator for you too. Uh, we support several things. Um, let's, let me just go over the, some of the parameters before we do some more examples. Um, so you can like play with the clamping. If you move it to the negative value, you can kind of, if you don't like this jagged edge, what you get from the extrusion, you can kind of clamp it down using the clamp. So it's just playing with white and black values um, from this point. Um, if you're using the recent um, Blender 3.5, which we support, uh, we also have 
the ability to use the blur attribute node which uh, was just implemented so this allows you to fix that banding issue or basically just smooth out the image so you can enable it with the switch value and you can play with the duration so smooth it out some more to kind of get a more cleaner result uh, but if you don't have if you have not upgraded yet then you have access to the smooth modifier so we can increase this to like 30 and you should be able to get uh, the same effect okay so, so you're provided for uh, most of the stuff are self-explanatory um, and most of the inputs are there for you so it's a very simple <laughs> add-on idea you could just download it and just start working with it let's try some more examples um, once it loads the image, you can hit, hit generate. Um, so, of course, the only requirement is you have to have internet connection. Um, like I mentioned, not none of the processing is done within your computer. Um, it's not done within your workstation. It's done online. So you just um, we handle sending your data, um, the image data online, and bringing it back into Blender um, for it to run nicely. Um, so you can see the result. Um, obviously, this image are very low quality and that's why it's a bit faster uh, if you have a larger image it will take longer uh, it i think the maximum you could go is probably five minutes that's the longest i think i've experienced um, and it was like it for a very high resolution image which we'll be testing probably uh okay let's do one with alpha that's um let's in case you want to use an image with alpha uh, so let's do like a landscape okay so we have this landscape image currently we don't have any alpha so I will create one alpha quickly so here in Photoshop if you have the most recent version it's quite easy to remove sky uh, which is typically what you'll be removing with the alpha or probably any specific thing um, so you can just select the sky and Photoshop does that automatically for you and once you have that you can delete it and save it as a PNG image. So I'll just call this one so I can identify it easily. Uh, let's do one more for this. I'll do the same thing sky. So, at this case, you'll be using your own um, HDR, my, um, like your sky texture or something. So, I'll save this as two. Okay, so we can select, reselect the image. So we have, let's go for two first, I like it. And once you have that selected, you can see it displays it and you can generate. So we'll kind of let it generate in real time so you can kind of see how it goes. Um, so don't get frustrated if you have a very high resolution image and it's taking time. Uh, it's just um, the size of your image matters um, because the procedure we're doing is um, exporting uh, we'll have to upload the your image get the um, generated depth map bring it back into blender so it, it's um, does the entire process and then once in blender geometry node takes control of everything so it's a very simple idea but very um, powerful okay so this took about um, 63 seconds and yeah we have it and we have the result so you can play with different val um, different values to kind of adjust the image to fit your scene to make it uh, feel just kind of play with the distortion to get it to work better might want to reduce the distortion if it's too much and have a very nice detailed background for less and uh, if you increase um, the resolution you keep getting more details we can preview the mesh and see how it looks so the great thing you can get very nice realistic much um, um blur um, camera blur effect it works nicely okay so for the alpha we can see in the geometry even in the texture we can see we have it cut out and that's because blender displays png image in the viewport appropriately uh but um, in the mesh level it's still there so if you want to remove the alpha it's as easy as selecting the image that has the alpha so 
uh, we can just copy the material name since it's going to have the same name as the texture and we just paste it here and we can identify it so once you paste it it seems nothing is happening but you can see we have use alpha when it's set to zero it's not using any alpha uh, when you have it set to one it uses the alpha okay and you can preview it to see if it's doing what you want and you can adjust um, the effect of that so let's say point one um, can kind of clip it some more and if you want it smoother in the render view it should be smoother because it's also using the alpha value which you can go into your render um, node so we are using a diffuse with transparent uh, because obviously uh, right off the back you don't want it to have glossy um, so that's why we're using diffuse um, node so you can always come here and add the color ramp and adjust the alpha even more to have it looking very crisp and there you go you can place it here uh, let's do a very cool stuff uh, add the camera and viewport also enable depth of field places gonna add an empty so you'll be getting reward <laughs> um, as real as you can get depth of field um, since you're actually dealing with real geometry and it you just get very high um, a very nice looking um, background asset uh, yes yeah, so that's how you can get uh, it so we can make this the focal point see what we get so you get very realistic looking depth of field okay so uh, let's do a couple more like two it's a very nice toy for me honestly <laughs> uh, let's do this one okay so if you experience that you don't see any image here, uh, it's fine for whatever reason. You can just click generate. Once you have this window, your image is already um, has been collected. Um, it, sometimes it do, do it's, it's the file browser. Since we're not using Blender's file browser to select that uh, for a specific reason, uh, we're using a browser to collect the, the image information and kind of operate everything that's why you don't need to log in anything you don't need to set up any account you can just jump right in and use it uh, so let it generate okay we are done um, this took about 110 seconds so it's a more higher uh, resolution image uh, you can see the result based off uh, the depth map so you can adjust it so we want to kind of pull this upwards slightly and maybe drag it out some more uh, we can use the alpha uh, Okay, uh, so you're set. Uh, let's do one last one. So you can run multiple instances of this in one Blender session. Um, so there's no limitation for that. And it can have handle complex um, shapes. So let's do this complex shape. So we can see we have multiple depth information. So one going in here and one going out here. So this is um, basically very basic for it to handle. Um, we'll just let it play okay so it's done and we can see the result so we have very nice result so we have it going this direction and we have it going this direction uh, you can select this and increase the resolution so you can even go up to 15 so if you, of course if you increase it it becomes 
um, it takes more to calculate since it's dealing with a lot of geometry and so I will enable the blur and let's increase the blur to something like 50 the iteration okay so the more you increase this uh, let's go 80 so you want to have it looking smooth okay let's say if this is you could keep um, adding more blur uh, we could now just set it to 8 and let me adjust this and I will set this to back high and how if you can easily optimize this once you're done um, let's say you're happy with this you can just go to object convert mesh so it applies everything and once it's done you can add the decimate modifier and let's go with a value of 0 0.02 okay so um, yeah it's decimated it uh, so that it's a bit uh, small so I'll go 0 0.06 So make sure your text textures are not stretching and stuff like that or oh, it's not messing up your UV map so much if you're happy you apply it and you have an optimized version okay so that's it guys I hope you, you found this very informative and useful uh, please check out this add-on it's definitely uh, going to add to your workflow and improve your project time since you don't need to worry about so much background image and it's going to really assist you uh, the link will be in the description as um, as said as I said earlier and yeah so bye bye for now see you next time